this next piece, uh, this next piece I wrote earlier this year. Uh, it's about uh, my stepfather and I growing up. Uh, and then earlier today, I received a phone call on the phone from my mother, uh, informing me she couldn't make it tonight, but um, my stepfather would be coming. So he's actually here in the corner. So uh, this makes me a little bit nervous. So just go through the whole story and it as well. <laughs> So, here we go. Batman had the Joker, Superman had Lex Luthor, the Flash had, well, Reverse Flash, and I had my stepfather. <laughs> Our relationship could at best be described as tumultuous. He came into my life very early on, and we never really saw eye to eye from the beginning. He was kind of cool, and I was kind of not. I always imagined him when he was younger as being that cliched kind of cool with the greased back hair, the leather jacket over the white t-shirt tucked into jeans, smoking in the bathroom. He was like the Fonz, and he ended up with, and he ended up with Potsy for a son. <laughs> he had a beard and cool hair and even cooler sunglasses. I, on the other hand, still can't grow a beard for the life of me. I'm balding and I'm pretty much blind without my regular glasses. <laughs> my friends growing up were few and fairly odd. My best friend lived down the street, and to my stepfather's probable disappointment, was the only kid on the block who got beat up more than I did. He was into comic books too, and we'd spend hours making up our stories together. The kinds of stories that only 10 year olds and Rob Liefeld could come up with. We'd imagine far off worlds with names like Battle Planet and menacing villains with names like the Emperor of Battle Planet. We'd draw out stories with the thinnest of plots, but filled with the most intricate of fight scenes. Giant muscles, huge guns, skin tight costumes, words like clobber and vengeance are part of the common vernacular. My stepfather didn't know what to do with this. To his credit, he did try and get involved. He'd look over our work and nod accordingly, if not convincingly. He'd dismiss it with that hope that it was just a passing fad, something that would be gone by the time I got into high school. Little did he know that it was only going to get worse. By the time I made it to high school, I had expanded into the worlds of sci-fi, fantasy, gaming. I'd increased my number of friends by 300%, adding a band geek and a guy with aspirations of system management at the local McDonald's. <laughs> The diversity was there, but the coolness just wasn't. What little I did to so what little I did do socially was usually just hanging out at the local comic book shop, where hipness was measured in your comic book knowledge and little else. I was fast becoming enmeshed in an even bigger world of comic book books than I'd ever known existed before. I was used to I was used to getting my fix at the local 7-Eleven, where my options were limited to whatever happened to be on hand at the time. But now were there companies like Dark Horse, Valiant, and Image being added to the ranks. I had found the world of independent comic books and I had never been happier. I took more and more of my new treasures home each week, especially after I started working a part-time job. My collection was growing by leaps and bounds, and although I was still saving half of each paycheck for the future, my stepfather still felt that I was spending way too much time and money on such a silly pursuit. He didn't understand why I'd rather stay in and read on the, week on the weekends than go out with friends. He'd slyly say things like, I don't understand why you'd rather stay in on the weekends than go out with friends. <laughs> Things were moving closer and closer to a head between us, and there didn't seem to be anything either one of us could do to prevent it. I'd gained a few more friends during the interim years, and work with, and with work had gained a bit more of a social life, but I was still definitely much more potsy than Fonzie. I'd only been on one date, a date I didn't even realize was a date until halfway through it, and there was no way I could ever pull off a leather jacket. As I worked more, I spent more on comic books and respectively more time alone in my room. My collection had expanded beyond the confines of my closet and was steadily spilling out across the room. My addiction was no longer hidden. My stepfather was becoming more and more concerned with how little I spent with my peers and how much time I spent with my fantasies. And then things blew up. By the time my mother, the great mediator, got home from work that night, we'd already been at it for hours. I don't remember the details of the fight, just the gist of it, which I'm sure you can already guess. Wasted money, stupid pursuits, wasted time, so much of it alone. The fight was more or less over by the time my mother walked in and I retreated to my room while she spoke with my stepfather. When she came up to speak with me, I made a big show of it. It was all high drama and tears, with me swearing off comic books for good if it'll make him happy, and so on and so forth. My mother listened to it all and then said her soothing words and told me I didn't have to stop collecting as long as I was responsible about it, and that I, shouldn't be more, that I should be more reasonable with my stepfather's demands. I'm sure she gave him the same speech, but in reverse, and after a few days, things went back to a sense of normalcy around the house. My stepfather became more accepting, and although he still doesn't get it to this day, he's never really pushed me to be anything other than what I am since. At the same time, I started to see what he was saying. I realized that I had a choice to make, whether or not I wanted to be a social exile for the rest of my life, or at least partially accepted member of society. I tamed down my collection, I refined my taste, and I did what any socially awkward teen who needs to feel accepted does. I found alcohol. <laughs> 
I stopped living in the fantasy worlds I'd spent so much time of my youth in and started finding things in reality that meant just as much to me. I found music and literature and nonfiction. I found a style and a peace of mind that felt like my own. As for my stepfather, he started to take a more active part in my life instead of the life he thought I should have. He got interested in what I was studying in college and what I was doing with my free time. He started reading books that I brought home for him instead of just stuffing them on a shelf somewhere. He even ate a veggie burger with me once. <laughs> so now, as I move into my 30s and look back at our lives together, I don't really see Potsy and the Fonz anymore. I don't see Superman and Lex Luthor. I guess I just see two guys that have a lot more in common than either one of them ever thought they would. Yeah.